Hey there everybody, this is Rubberband and I'm going to be showing you uh, fairly quickly how to disassemble and reassemble, start to finish a Schlage Everest Primus. This reassembly will also apply to Schlage Everest in its normal iteration as the, uh, the finger pin and check pin reassembly kind of steps are the same, albeit minus a couple. Um, so um, I'm just doing this because I thought it might help somebody in case they have to reassemble these and uh, they wanted some tips. This is just because I do uh, hundreds of these a week, so I kind of have a, I guess, intimate understanding. So I always remove these because they will go lost and you don't want that. So, so um, just making sure everything's in frame here. All right, so <clears throat> this is a Schlegevis Primus in its normal iteration. We have, uh, right here is our sidebar. So I'm gonna turn it 90 degrees. I always go to the right, just because I do everything the same way every time. So right here, so when I turn it, the sidebar is going to end up right here. So we're gonna go 90 degrees. And I'm gonna pick up my follower here and chase it out. So I always make sure that my thumb is over the sidebar. So you can see the sidebar here, it's backing out. I keep my thumb over it as I slide the plug out. Keeps it under pressure, keeps it from flying somewhere. Sidebars are expensive, proprietary, and if they go missing, you are probably in trouble as far as your high security lock is concerned. I'm gonna drop my sidebar and the two powerful springs that are behind it. Okay, keep them right by themselves. These, these are uh, zero, Value pins, this is technically blank, so I'm gonna just dump all of those. It's not important where they come from. Uh, as far as disassembly, here's uh, my finger pins. So I'm gonna keep my thumb over the top uh, with light pressure so I, I can let them move up and down uh, because they, they're gonna need to to let the key come out, usually, so backing out. So, all right, so I loosen pressure up a little bit see that they're all active, they have all popped up. I'm going to take my tweezers, and I operate bow to tip. So uh, bow is the closest to the plug, so I, I'm trying to make this quick, so I'm gonna pull these out. I think I've had to do this video a couple times already just because I had everything out of frame, which made for a very terrible video. I'm very new to this, so. <clears throat> dump the spring that it activates the finger pin right over it. So that way it goes together the same way every single time. A lot of this might come together and seem like common sense to some people, but I hope it's either uh, informative or entertaining to watch in the event that I fling something somewhere. So, all right. Uh, here's where a lot of people kind of have the problem, which is uh, top pins. So um, as I back it out, I like to put pressure over the top of it with my tweezers and let it fall out the back. I do that so it doesn't kind of fling at me and if it goes down there, I know it's gonna go right to the table. I always keep my hand right on the table. So I'll put this up here, uh, dump the spring that it goes with right there. I guess I'll move everything away from each other. I'm not used to working on a shop rag, but I'm doing it as an impromptu kind of see if I can help somebody out here, so. Uh, these springs are quite powerful as well. Um, these are aftermarket springs. I've put these in here. Um, they aren't what came in. Okay, I keep it from firing out and then I'll let it drop out the back. I know where it's gonna go. <clears throat> the, uh, the rag kind of minimizes the amount of bounciness. If I had a pinning mat, it'd be even better because I have a little area right here that I can keep my hand in that it dumps into, so. All right, so we're moving right along here. Uh, feel free to watch and fast forward if you need to. Or maybe I should speed it up, I don't know. All right, so we're at pin five. Okay, we have all key pins out and all springs out. <clears throat> Reassembly can be kind of a trick because you're relying on friction 
and that can be kind of unreliable, especially in the case of something slippery. So um, in my instance, I always load all springs first. So I'll drop my follower here so I have my full hand to work with. Going from the back. Okay, go back to front. Kind of shimmy your springs in place. This probably isn't the hard part for a lot of people, but it can be difficult, especially if your bench or whatever area you're working in doesn't have enough light because you're looking into a shadowy plug or a shell, shell anyway, housing, whatever you want to call it. I would call it a plug housing. Some people call it a shell. Okay, so with key pins, um, with lab tweezers, they're kind of neat because they've got an, a very narrow tip. So um, I like to put my plug in or my plug follower in just a little bit, okay? Right about here. I, uh, I look down the barrel here to make sure that my spring isn't actually contacting the follower. So I'll take this and I grab it just by the top angle, okay? And then I'll go in and I push down on that spring, kind of shimmy it into place. Okay, I know that it dropped. I push forward on the follower to give it friction. So it's locked by friction, then I'm gonna follow in with my tweezers and push it all the way down. Okay, it has backed over it and it is now pinned between here and the follower. So I'll take my next pin. So you'll kind of know if you hit the wrong area because it'll push your pin up through the tweezers and you don't really have the same pushing force. So you'll kind of be able to guess by that. So I keep hitting the wrong area because I don't have enough light. So, all right, got it pinned via friction. Next one, pinned by friction. So it gets a lot easier as you get toward the front and you can actually see. So, all right, so you can see it, I think, if the light is right, I don't think it is, but it's it, it ends up being pinned by me pushing the follower up against the pin and pegging it against the, the top of the, the chamber hole. So um, there's a lot of travel, so it was kind of throwing me off because the space between the pins is kind of large here. Um, I uh, spent Basically all last week keying up little Olympus locks, so they're quite close together. So, all right. So hopefully you can see that being the front. It's pinned by me pushing. So all right, all right, I'll push it down with my tweezers. Okay, so that part's all reassembled. Now it's time for the plug itself. So I'm gonna take my tweezers and I'm gonna go bow to tip. I start there, I end in the opposite fashion. So, all right didn't drop it correctly, so, all right. All right, <clears throat> take these, thumb them in here, bow to tip. They are rotational, depending on the sidebar bidding, they will rotate and the little notch that's in the side right here, you can kind of see a crimping, I hope. Um, that allows the sidebar to drop into the sidebar channel. So I push these in so I can get my key in and it will keep them in their place. The next thing I'm going to check is if my sidebar will allow me to push everything in, I don't want to key it up and all of a sudden my sidebar is not going flush because I put the finger pins in the wrong order. So kind of nestle this in here, push it all the way in. If you can push all the way in across the whole thing and it can sit flush with the plug, then you know you have it keyed up correctly or uh, a bitted correctly. So I, uh, while I'm putting the key pins in, I always drop that. I don't want to fight it the whole time, but I keep my thumb over the spring so they don't fall out and I lose them because the, you basically can't fabricate those little springs. They're very tiny and very specific, just like the finger pins themselves. So I'll 
right here we are so we'll take our sidebar and we'll nest it in here okay all right so what I do here is I keep my my shell, my housing here, and I'm gonna <clears throat> put it the same way as how I disassemble it. I was kind of trying to figure out how to word it for a second there. So, all right, I make sure there's not gonna be any gaps of the follower to allow anything to drop. So I butt it up against the back here, and I actually just push the, the shell. So that way I can kind of wiggle it if I need to, but I can keep consistent pressure on the sidebar. It's pinned now, it's not gonna go anywhere, and then I'll just push my housing up over the top. All right, and I do this, okay? But, uh, before you pull your key out, always make sure to put your thumb right here on the plug. That way you don't fling everything everywhere uh, because it's sheared so it will wanna back out. So, not a very fun experience. I've done that probably too many times. Okay, and key, don't push in too hard or it will fling out like it just did. Okay, and then thread cap nestled on top. Hopefully this was in frame and I don't have to video this again. That'd be nice. Okay. Okay, and then I back one click off. If it is too tight, it will jam your key. If it is too loose, it will not let your key come out. All right, we are smooth. And normally this is where I would hit it with a lubricant, uh, which would not be graphite. I would not use graphite. Don't do that. Um, it causes fouling and all that other mean stuff. Um, use TriFlow or uh, Houdini or Lockheed's or any of the other proprietary formulations by lock manufacturers that they like to promote. All right, so there it is. We have our assembly and disassembly start to finish of a Schlage Everest Primus. I hope that was informative and thank you for watching.